Hello and welcome. My name is Christy Douglas and I'm the lead faculty in the hospitality management program at Moore Park College in Southern California. I'm here today to talk to you about OER and ZTC and how those things can bridge gaps for equity and inclusion in career education. I'm going to specifically talk about my experience creating OER in hospitality, but this presentation is designed for anyone in any discipline because all are welcome. All right, let's start off by playing a little game of name that acronym. <laughs> we all know there are a ton of acronyms in higher education. And so I wanna go over really quickly what OER and ZTC are and how they differ. So OER stands for Open Educational Resources. These are materials that are openly licensed and available for use um, for teaching, learning, and other purposes. Um, these uh, pieces of OER may include full courses and modules, course materials, textbooks, videos or media, um, assessment tools, software, software platforms, those sort of things. Um, ZTC stands for zero textbook cost. So this is when a specific course does not require any fees for textbooks or materials for the student. Um, this doesn't mean that there are no costs incurred in creating and preparing those materials, just that the student has zero textbook costs for that course. So um, OER can be ZTC, uh, can, you know, can contribute to a ZTC course. ZTC courses can include OER, but they're not always intertwined. So ZTC would include, a, obviously, a class that, that functions based off of um, completely OER, open resources, but it can also include classes where there are no textbooks or materials, where the faculty has um, integrated all of the elements into the course, or there just simply isn't a need for any materials or textbook in the course. Um, it can include library resources, which again, the school may pay for um, access to different journals and different resources, but the student doesn't have any cost incurred for, the, for using those. Um, it could have um, a system set up for textbook or, or material loans. So I've heard of schools that have a, um, a library of the textbook required for a certain course on hand, and they loan those out to the students each semester. So again, school has purchased those books, but there's no cost to the student who's using them each semester. Um, also things like public domain information. So anything with a .gov, um, you know, put out by our government is free, you know, to use and for educational purposes. So that's something any sort of materials created um, by government agencies would be uh, available for that purpose. Um, also online articles. So those would be things that you um, need to be careful with copyrights. But for the most part, if they're publicly available online for free, it is fine to share those articles with your students. But you need to be careful what you do with them, how you reproduce them or modify them. And we'll talk about that in a little more detail in a minute. But again, those are great tools to um, connect your students with current information information at no cost to them. Um, another thing that's a big topic right now is low cost options. So a lot of schools are pushing for the ZTC, obviously, in as many courses as possible, as possible. But in some disciplines or courses, that just may not be an option. Um, I'll give you an example. One of my colleagues teaches accounting. And um, she just has tried and tried to find open resources to create them. And it's just very challenging. The, the textbook piece is easy. There are open accounting textbooks out there, but the piece that really is lacking is the homework system where the student logs in and gets to practice and work through problems and gets step-by-step help, step help to know where they went wrong in a problem. Those sort of things take a lot of um, infrastructure and coding and all of that to create. And so switching that accounting class to completely ZTC is just not an option right now. Hopefully there are new um, resources developed for those sort of things, like My Open Math I know is making great strides in, in the math area. Um, but so for her class, she would be, maybe be able to categorize her class as low cost because the students don't have to purchase the textbook, but they do need to purchase a subscription to that online homework um, system. So that's an option as well. So hopefully that clears up what ZTC is, what low cost options are, low cost textbook, um, courses, and then um, what OER is. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that now. So let's talk about what the O in OER stands for. 
open, right? So they're openly licensed materials. So things you're used to seeing is the little C in the circle for a copyright, right? And there are very there are different types of copyrights, um, but but generally those uh, a copyright protects the creator of the content um, and and prevents anyone else from using it, sharing it, distributing it, um, or profiting from it in any other way, right? So Creative Commons license are sort of the opposite of that. They are um, saying that this work is copyrighted with an open copyright with certain parameters on it. So you will see a Creative Commons license with any combination of these four symbols. CC BY means that you just have to attribute that piece of work to the creator, publisher, or you know whoever whoever wrote it or created it, right? So simply we call it attribution, right? Creative Commons by means I'm attributing that I t that this work was created by this person and I'm I'm reusing it, right? So that's the most open basic one. You just have to say they did it. Now I'm doing what I want with it, right? Um, CCNC means non-commercial. So it means that you cannot take a work that has a CCNC um, license and use it for any commercial purposes. Of course, using it in our educational system, in, in our courses as material, totally fine, right? That's not commercial purposes. Um, CCSA is share alike. That means that when you see something that has the SA on it, you have to, um, anytime you use that material and re rework it to, um, to share another way, you have to share it with the same license that it was shared with. So whichever combination of license it has, whatever it says with SA means you have to share it exactly that same license. So the original uh, creator of the content wants to ensure that that people continue to share it openly, right? Um, and then ND, CCND means non-derivative. That means you cannot modify it. So you can reuse it, but you can't change it. And we're gonna talk about what all of these things mean in a minute. So again, you'll see any combination of these four symbols in the different licenses. Um, a lot of OER that you see is gonna be the CC by NC. That means you have to attribute the work to the original creator and you can't use it for commercial purposes, which is in my mind, the best one for educational use because it's gonna keep things, keep the integrity of it open keep it where people aren't using it in, um, you know, any sort of official published purchasable materials, right? So that's kind of my favorite, but um, but obviously the most open and freely usable is the CC BY because there's the fewest restrictions on that. Um, you will also see um, things that are just um, Creative Commons with a, like a zero and that like, I think it's a zero with a line through it. And that means it's just open. You don't need to attribute it to anyone. It is out there. You do with it whatever you want. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about um, how you can use OER. All right. So let's talk about the five R's of OER. So true OER can have these five characteristics, right? It is something that you can reuse, meaning that you can take it and, um, you know, use it in another way, in another format, right? Revise, meaning that you can adjust it, modify it, change it, tweak it however you want. Remix, meaning that you can combine it with other resources. So you can take a piece of this um, article and a piece of this story and a piece of this and put it all together and remix it into your own original combination. Redistribute means that you can um, share this new version that you've created by revising, remixing, whatever, and you can redistribute it elsewhere, right? You can share it with your students. You can you can share it in um, in any sort of platform that you want to get it out to a, a, a different audience. And then retain, that you have the ability to keep a copy of the content. So it's not something that you can just um, access for a, a you know one month subscription and then you no longer have access to it. Something that you can save a hard you know file um, or printed copy of and um, and keep. So true OER allows for these five R's to happen. Um, as we saw with our Creative Commons license, there are some versions of openly you know openly copyrighted material. Um, openly licensed material that does not allow for all of these options. So going back, licenses that have the um, ND, non-derivative, that means you cannot revise, remix, 
and um, redistribute probably. So you have to be careful with how you're using them and when you're creating content, how you're license, licensing it to make sure that you have it set up so that you it can be used how you intend for it to be used. So keeping in mind the licenses and the ability to do the five R's to specific content. All right, so let's take a quick pause and, and a, a quick reality check. So how have your students been impacted by textbook or educational costs? Think about it for a second. Have you had students who have dropped the class or failed the class because they couldn't afford the textbook? Have you had students who had to skip meals or work extra shifts and were extremely tired coming to class in order to purchase the textbook? I have an example, makes me cry every time. Um, I had a student who was um, joined my class and emailed me and said, you know, I, I can't afford the textbook, waiting for my next paycheck, gonna be, you know, maybe a little behind on the first few assignments. I said, no problem, just keep me posted and we'll work on figuring out what you can work on before you get the book and so on. And as she keeps emailing me back and forth saying that she's, you know, still trying to order the book and waiting on it to be shipped and so on, she lets me know she's pregnant and due very soon and that she's working, you know, many hours at her job and that she's a little worried about what's going to happen when the baby comes because she won't be able to work. And um, and it sort of just evolves into this whole thing where I realized that by by making her purchase this hundred and fifty dollar textbook, I am putting a huge burden on her and her family. And I feel like a terrible person for doing that. Because for some people, 150 bucks is no big deal, but for a lot of our students, it is quite an impact on their finances. And so from that point on, I started looking into OER and I started looking into ways to lower the cost or eliminate the cost of materials in my courses. So let's talk a little bit more about who benefits from OER. So this is some um, specific statistics of a study of 21,000 students in Florida. Um, who were impacted by, you know, the cost of textbooks. So it shows that 66.6% don't even purchase the textbook. There could be various reasons for this, but I would imagine the majority of it is because they can't afford it, right? Um, so, I mean, it shows all kinds of statistics. You can obviously read it about students who take fewer courses, who don't register for certain courses because of the cost of the textbook who drop courses, withdraw from courses, or fail courses because they cannot afford the textbook. That is a backward system if I've ever seen one. That like, you can't afford to pay for the materials, so too bad you don't succeed. That we should be doing the opposite for our students to set them up for success. So why should we use OER if those examples I just shared aren't enough? Um, you know, now is the perfect time. You know, we can't change what we've done in the past, but we can move forward positively. I love the sunflower example of equity or e equality versus equity. On the left, you see equality. Everyone gets the same height bench. And then you see equity, where those who need it get more. Those who have the need for the resources get access to them. OER and ZTC eliminates all of that. It, it means that even if you could afford a textbook, you still don't have to pay for it, right? We are taking away that, that barrier to success in education entirely, right? And also the perfect timing with all the, the work that's been done on the guided pathways. Um, the, the OER piece and the, you know, eliminate, eliminating or minimizing textbook cost piece is the kind of bridge between the enter the path and stay in the path right, where students may not enter a path because they see the high cost of materials and textbooks in that, in that path. Or once they've entered, they may realize this isn't sustainable. I can't continue to pay for, you know, $500 in books every semester. I can't do this. I can't stay on this path. So we need to look at what we can do to ensure students are able to enter the path of their choosing, stay on that path, and are successful. And OER is a huge step towards that. So now you're thinking, okay, you've sold me. OER is a great idea, but like, where do I start, right? So for some disciplines, you are super fortunate and there are materials out there 
and they are plentiful and they are high quality and they're amazing. So um, certain disciplines, you'll have a very easy time finding materials and um, adopting them into your courses. Other disciplines, there is a lack of OER and work is being done at the state level to rectify that, but it will take time. Um, so I've included here links to um, a ton of websites that share OER um, in different ways, in different formats. Some things like OpenStax are very clean, polished, publisher looking materials um, that are very, very comparable to traditional publisher textbooks. Um, and then other, um, other platforms like Skills Commons is more broad and, you know, specific to certain skills and, and, um, and industries maybe isn't a full textbook. It's a piecemeal situation. But you need to look through these and see what works for your discipline, what you find and, and what works. Um, again, there's going to be fully ready to adopt textbooks. There's going to be pieces that you'll pull in um, to improve your courses bit by bit, right? Um, another thing we can use is open images. So there is a Creative Commons um, image search with like, I think it's like half a million images that are free to use. Um, and so that's a great tool. Also, um, when we're thinking about our um, need for, you know, improved equity and, um, and diversity and inclusion in our courses, um, a great photo um, site that I found is called Nappy, and it includes um, very diverse images, but the same type of images you're going to need um, in those kind of like stock photo situations, but with people of different backgrounds. And it's there's some amazing photos there. Um, and another option is Unsplash. There's a ton of other options as well, but those are some of my favorites. And then I always say the kitchen sink, like when in doubt, when you don't even know where to start, your go-to is Google Advanced Search. So when you pull up a search, you're going to put in your search topic. So I would just start with hospitality and like leave it vague. I could go as specific as hotel management. I could go down to event diagrams. I could go down to whatever level I want, right? Um, so I'm gonna put that in the Google search bar. I'm gonna then click on the settings, advanced search, and then scroll down to usage rights. And I can select free to use and share, free to publish uh, or free to use commercially. There's a, a couple different options there. So I can select free to use and share, and then it'll f fine tune the options that it provides me to only things that are openly licensed, meaning it does the work for me. And that will link me often to these OER repositories listed on the left. Um, a lot of times just connect me straight to those where there are existing materials, but a lot of times it's going to be other things that are out there. Um, and those are going to be really helpful, especially in career education, which we all know is ever changing, right? Things are always moving and shaking in our disciplines and we need to stay current on what's going on. So that's kind of an intro to where to find OER. So let me tell you a little bit about my OER journey. So I, again, had this revelation, I shouldn't be charging my students this kind of money for a textbook, I can do better. And I started looking. So I started digging for OER using all of those methods I, I, um, I showed you in the previous slide. And this was two years ago, so things have improved since, but I did not find a lot of OER for hospitality. Um, there certainly weren't uh, really any ready to use textbooks like there are in business and um, history and child development and a bunch of other disciplines. Um, and so I was a little disheartened by that, but I kept looking and I found a lot of great individual resources. Um, and But I realized that, you know, we're, as faculty, we work our butts off, right? We all work hard, we care about our students, we want to do the right thing, but it's a lot of work to even adopt a new published textbook that comes with, you know, quiz questions and PowerPoint slides and all the different resources and support materials that we're used to. Even that adoption process is a pain, right? It's a lot of work on our end. So I thought, wow, adopting any of these, you know, individual materials and piecing it together, that's going to be a lot of work. And so I said, you know, I am not sure I can do this alone and I'm not sure I should because I don't necessarily have all the information when it comes to my discipline. So I looked around and I found that there were grant opportunities from the ASCCC, the Academic Senate of the California Community College OERI, Open Education Resource Initiative. Okay, So the ASCCC OERI had grant opportunities at the time um, for creation or um, 
you know, implementation of uh, OER. And so I threw it out there. I said, I'm going to try to apply for this grant, right? So I got a team together. I applied for this grant and we got it. We got funded. And so we have spent the last year, almost a year and a half now, um, working on creating an open intro to hospitality textbook, textbook alternative, right? It'll be um, published online on LibreText and um, it uh, will be pretty cool, I think. Uh, we're in the in the final stages, wrapping that up. So please do reach out to me if you have any questions or want to learn more about that specific resource. But um, we really we we I brought originally just three other colleagues from other community colleges together. We um, kind of hammered out what the formatting should be, how we wanted to lay it out, what we should do, and we quickly realized we needed a bigger team. So I reached out to dozens of people of our contacts that we pulled together. Um, to see if they would participate. People from industry, other faculty from other schools all over the country, um, and people were willing to get on board with us. And so we have now a textbook that is in the final stages that's been created by about 30 people, um, all sharing their different areas of expertise. And so we've kind of pieced it together and we're in the home stretch. But now as I, um, you know, kind of finish this piece of the puzzle, I realized that that same concern I had when I was going into this of the adoption process and the lack of ancillaries and needing those to make the adoption process smooth is still there. So I am now trying to get funding to go back with a small team of the people who participated on the larger project and create all the ancillaries, create the quiz banks and the PowerPoints and the instructor guides and all of those things that will be helpful for faculty in our discipline, especially knowing that many of the faculty in the hospitality arena came from industry. They aren't teachers by trade, right? They aren't college faculty by trade. They're doing this either as an adjunct role part-time or maybe they're new to it coming from industry. So, um, and that's the same with a lot of CT disciplines, right? And so we want to make sure that the adoption process of this resource is as easy as possible. And therefore, um, the adoption rate is as high as possible because there's no point in putting all this energy into a piece of work for no one to use it, right? We want it to be used far and wide all over the California community colleges, but beyond that. Um, we have, you know, contributors, as I said, from schools all over the country. So we want this... Um, work to be adopted across the board, right? Because we want students to not be burdened by expensive textbooks across the board, right? And the final thing I learned by going through this process is that um, this textbook is now my baby. I'm tied to it for the rest of my life. There's no way I can just walk away. And so we're going to have to revisit it every few years and do updates and make sure things are still working and current and links are still good. Um, because you know, otherwise it's not going to be useful and it'll fall off the, you know, fall off the edge again. So we need to um, continue to nurture this project and um, and keep checking in on it, keep encouraging people to adopt it, keep encouraging the people who have adopted it to give us feedback on how we can make it better um, and make it more, you know, even more collaborative by getting other input. Um, and so, yeah, so I've kind of accepted that I, I have a third child now. I have two little girls, but this is my baby now. And I have this textbook that's going to be with me um, for the rest of my career. And I'm going to be able to um, continue to improve it and continue to save students money as they pursue their educational goals. And that makes my heart so happy. So it's so worth it. So now that we've gone over what is OER, why should you use it? How can you go about finding it and using it? Um, Let's talk about how you can make this happen. So what are some steps that you can take in your discipline, in your classes, at your campus to adopt OER, to offer ZTC or low cost courses? So I wanna challenge you to make some smart goals when it comes to OER and ZTC. Obviously we know smart goals are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So this semester, what will you do to work towards this goal? It may just be asking, asking your, your administration for support, asking colleagues for help and collaboration. Um, it may be doing some research, seeing what's out there, because sometimes you'll be surprised with what's out there and that it's, it's pretty much ready to go and you just need to take the time to adopt it. 
Um, so maybe it's just getting your research started. Maybe it's, um, you know, getting a team assembled, getting support on your campus. Um, think about who you could collaborate with. Um, I am a department of one. I am an adjunct and I am the only faculty in our hospitality program. So I have, I have no one. I'm me and I'm it. And I have had to seek help outside of my, my campus. And it's been a wonderful experience to network and, and connect with faculty from all over the state um, and the country um, through this project. Because now I have, I have a team, which I didn't have before. I mean, I have a lot of support from our business program and other other disciplines, but it's not the same when they don't really understand your discipline and what you teach, right? So, um, so figure out who you can collaborate with, um, whether it be people in your department, in other departments. Um, if there's cross-discipline collaboration on this, there may be um, topics that can be researched and, and, you know, OER can be created that will serve most, multiple areas, multiple courses or disciplines. Um, and then again, across campuses, um, if you have a college district and multiple campuses, maybe it's something that the district will be willing to help, um, you know, bring teams together um, from your, your different campuses or um, through the school, through ASCCC OERI, we have discipline leads for all of the, um, or most, you know, we're working on building our team for most of the CT, CTE disciplines. And so um, I can definitely connect you with those people or I can connect you with the point person for that project um, to find collaborators in your discipline. Find what they're already working on. Um, I always say work smarter, not harder. There's no point in reinventing the wheel. If something already exists that you can use and build on and work together to make it better, that's what we should be doing, right? And then finally, just think about the training or support you might need. Um, it's definitely a process to fully understand um, what categorizes OER, how to find it, um, how to properly cite things, how to make sure things are accessible to students with different learning needs. There's so many pieces of the puzzle. And so find out the training or support you might need from your um, administration, from the region and from the state, um, because that's definitely out there. It's available. There are trainings, online webinars that are often free um, to help people understand what OER is, how to use it, how to go about creating it, all of that. So um, keep an open mind and set some SMART goals for yourself on how you can move towards these goals. I know it doesn't happen overnight, but just baby steps of what you can do this semester or even this summer, right? Um, summer's a great time to kind of regroup and adopt something new and try something new and get it ready for the fall. So set some goals and see what happens. So finally, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. Um, hopefully you've learned something new and have a little bit of fire in your belly to go and look into this as an option for your school, for your program, for your students. Because this is ultimately the end goal is equity and inclusion for our students. Thank you again. I'll include the slides for this presentation and my contact information, everything in a link with the video. Um, please do feel free to reach out and let me know if I can help connect you with anyone or um, share any resources or knowledge that I have. Thank you.